Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another of my amazing kick-ass family court tutorials. Today I will be discussing what I see as a bog standard or typical child arrangements pattern that people will end up with often after many, many months of being in the mad adversarial family court system, often spending tens of thousands of pounds on totally unnecessary and pointless lawyers. So why not watch this vlog, take notes and agree on this or a similar pattern at mediation and save yourself and your children the destructive trauma of going through the family court. The best gift separated parents can give their children is to agree and support their futures. So my message to parents is not to be the ones acting like children in the playground, but instead to get child arrangements sensibly settled as early as possible, and hopefully without going to court, drawing a line on the past and any unfortunate indiscretions and behaviours that occur in most relationships, and to move forward with a positive mindset. I am Philip Kedge, the kick-ass Mackenzie Friend, a retired police chief inspector, the director of the Mackenzie Friend UK network, and fearless family court vlogger. Nothing I say constitutes legal advice because you don't need legal advice and you don't need lawyers. I provide guidance and support as a layperson. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's do it. A standard child arrangements order often reflects that the children reside with the resident parent and spends time with the non-resident parent. In most cases, it is based around the school term time and holiday timetable, unless of course the child is still a baby or a toddler. So let's start with the school term. This is usually 10 weeks in each of the three terms of autumn, spring and summer. A common arrangement would be for the child to stay with the non-resident parent on a two week pattern. On week one, from Friday after school to Sunday evening, and week two, perhaps one overnight stay during the week from Wednesday to Thursday. Of course, for that to happen, the non-resident parent will need to be able to take the child to school and to pick them up. And there should be breakfast and after school clubs to help working parents. Now, a possible variation on this is an extra night on week one, picking the child up from school on a Friday and returning them to school on a Monday. A simple, neat and pragmatic term time arrangement. Moving on now to the school holidays, which are commonly shared on a 50-50 arrangement. Let's start with the half terms. There are three half terms of one week each. Again, the autumn, spring and summer half term holidays. Now, there are three general ways of splitting the three half term holidays on a 50-50 basis. The first and most obvious is to split each of them in half with the handover at midday on the Wednesday. Each year the, who starts each of the half terms flips. For example, if mum has the first half of the summer half term in year one, dad has the first half of the summer half term in year two. The second approach is to just have a whole week each from collection after school to return to school. This works on a two year pattern. For example, in year one, the autumn half term is with mum, the spring half term with dad, the summer half term with mum. In year two, the autumn half term is with dad, the spring with mum, and summer half term is back with dad. Again, nice and simple, no dramas. The third possible approach, which is quite popular, is a hybrid of the two previous models where the parents get one half term each, but the third, usually the summer, is split in half. Again, in year two, the pattern is flipped so that whoever had the autumn half term in year one now has a spring half term in year two, and whoever had the start of the summer half term in year one now has a second half in year two. Perfect, a sensible pattern that can be agreed at mediation. Okay, that's the half term holiday sorted out, so let's now talk about Christmas. Christmas is usually a two-week holiday and a common solution is for it to be split into two periods. The first from break up after school to midday Boxing Day and then with the other parent from Boxing Day to return to school. In year two that flips, so the other parent has the first period 
with the Christmas Day. Now there are many other ways to split up the holiday and many agree to actually split Christmas Day with each having half a day each. All good. The main point is to bury the hatchet, be the grown-ups in the room and have a sensible discussion compromise and to come to an agreement. Avoiding what is, in many cases, a disastrous application to the broken and inept family court. So what about Easter? Well, exactly the same approach applies. You can split the two week holiday in half and flip who starts every year. You may have an arrangement that in year one, a parent gets slightly more nights and the other slightly less. That is absolutely fine as that alternates in year two. It all adds up to a 50-50 split. Very commonly, Christmas and Easter holidays are arranged so that whoever has Christmas day, the other has Easter Sunday. The secret is to keep it simple. Now, of course, there may be other alternative religious festivals to consider. Well, sit down and sensibly split them in a similar way. I can't cover everything. I'm just trying to take into account the normal school timetable. Let's move on to the big one, the summer holiday. The summer holiday period is usually six weeks, which gives lots of different opportunities to split up on a shared 50-50 basis. A block of three weeks each is possible, but perhaps not that usual. One week on and one week off is a good possibility, but many parents want to go away abroad for longer periods. So perhaps the most common arrangement is something like week one with mum, week two and three with dad, weeks four and five back with mum, and week six with dad. And that alternates every year. Nice and easy, why make it difficult? Right, moving swiftly on, in a bog standard child arrangements order, there are often several bolt-ons to consider. So let's spend a couple of minutes looking at those. The children's birthdays. Well, if it falls on a school day, then sensibly the parent who doesn't have contact gets to see the children from after school to say 7 p.m. If the birthday is on a weekend or holiday, then that day can be split in half. Be sensible, be pragmatic, don't fight over trying to be too exact. Remember, it's quality of time that matters, not quantity. Next are school inset days, let me explain. Normally inset days are bolted onto the weekend, so whoever has the children that weekend also has the inset day. So if it is dad's weekend, Friday to Sunday, and the Monday is an inset day, then dad has the extra night and returns the children either Monday evening or back to school on Tuesday morning. We are nearly done with only a couple of issues left. The next one is Mother's and Father's Day. Well, common sense should prevail. If, for example, it's the mum's weekend, but the Sunday is Father's Day, the children should stay with Dad, say, from 10am to 4pm on the Sunday. A similar arrangement should be made for Mother's Day. The next issue that causes many disputes is that of passports. Well, passports normally remain with the resident parent and are made available to the other parent, say, two weeks before a holiday, and then return to the resident parent on the first handover after the holiday. There is absolutely no point getting precious about who holds the passports. They are just bits of paper. They are not flesh and blood. Passports are not your children. Lastly, we come to handovers. Please don't turn handovers into dramas. Ideally, handovers should be shared to demonstrate to the children that both parents support the arrangements. Handovers can be at houses or at an independent location. Whatever works best. So that's me pretty well done. If you are separating, and I know that separation is messy, emotional, traumatic, and full of hurt feelings and acrimony, but for the sake of your children, please don't destroy their childhoods don't stupidly go running to family lawyers handing over tens of thousands of pounds. Lawyers who have no professional duty of care to any children and may leave you in lifelong crippling debt. Go to mediation 
approach mediation with a sensible plan, iron out the details and move on with your lives, giving your children the loving security that they so desperately need. Now, I have rattled through this vlog today at quite a pace. So, to help out, if you would like a script that explains the child arrangement patterns that I have mentioned today, then just contact me at contactphil.co.uk and say something like, Hi Phil, I am loving your kick-ass vlogs. Please can I have an example of a typical child arrangements pattern? At the same time, you can explore the Mackenzie Friend UK Network website, the one-stop shop to all of your family court solutions-based needs. Until next time.